Yes. Good evening. I hope everyone can hear me. Karibuni sana to tonight's uh, session. I'm really glad uh, to have you on board. I also want to thank our speaker who has joined us very early to share his knowledge and insights on a very important topic today. And that is uh, finance, personal finance, which is a big forest for, for most of us. And if you don't have them up, it becomes uh, a really hard time for you. Please uh, confirm if you can uh, hear me. Someone to confirm if I'm audible. Yes, Dr. Good evening. Right thank you so you. much. Thank you, thank you. And thanks for joining. For those who are joining us tonight, my name is Dr. Mima uh, Vincent. Uh, it's my pleasure to moderate today's session. I'm part of the careers team under the Young Doctors Network, uh, led by one and only Dr. John Kailiti, uh, where we support young professionals in navigating their career journeys with guidance and mentorship. <sighs> Additionally, I'm also a coach at Afrikili Health Village. If you have not heard about Afrikili, a home of balance, where we focus on helping you as an individual live a balanced and fulfilled life through balancing your will of life um, via practical and uh, also insightful conversations, uh, guiding you on your mental health and wellness, one conversation at a time. Uh, on the other side, also uh, currently uh, been certified as a cloud architect from Amazon bring expertise uh, in cloud solutions uh, that can align with your businesses and other needs in our, in our economy. Today, I'm honored to facilitate this session uh, on a very important topic, understanding your finance, uh, the financial market. Uh, but we are not going to deal about the whole uh, thing. We have a very important guest tonight who's going to tackle uh, on uh, matters uh, money market funds, bonds and bills as part of your tools on um, achieving a financial balance. <clears throat> I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Karibuni sana and uh, feel welcome. I want to start off with a word of prayer quickly. Dear Lord, we come before you today with grateful hearts, thanking you for this opportunity to learn and grow together. You ask for your wisdom and the guidance as we explore this important uh, topic of financial markets. We pray for clarity and understanding. May each of us live here today about to make to to about to make wise financial decisions that uh, can help us to be good stewards of your resources and trusted towards. Bless our speaker tonight, Mr. Robert, and all the participants fill uh, joining us uh, tonight with a spirit of collaboration and openness, help, help him to share the knowledge that will not only benefit us individually, but also contribute to the young community of medical, uh, medical practitioners. We entrust the decision uh, into your hands. Lord, that we pray that you do and say, will bring your glory to your name. In Jesus' name, I do believe and pray. Amen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> today you are diving into a very essential area of uh, personal finance, understanding the financial markets, uh, specifically the money market funds, bonds, and also the, the tertiary bills. Uh, these instructions may sound complex uh, if you have never gone through a finance class. Well, they're actually uh, accessible tools for us to, to significantly improve, uh, improve our financial growth and uh, security. So as we look into each one of them, um, we hope to un uncover how many market funds as a speaker delves into it deeper so that uh, it offers us a stable way to save uh, like money market funds and grow your funds as a, as a medic. How bonds can provide that vendable income uh, as part of your in, income, uh, income stream, uh, and how pressure bills can act as a, a, 
a secure short-term uh, investment for you. We hope by the end of the day, uh, sessions, uh, you will be equipped with the, the knowledge to make informed financial decisions with a better grasp of these options. Uh, you hope that you'll be empowered to diversify your portfolio and manage risk well, and ultimately build a more resilient financial future. So before I let the speaker take over, we have a question today for you. Um, and actually this uh, question is, um, if right now you have a uh, thousand dollars between the man market funds, bonds and uh, treasure bills or uh, your savings account, which one would you choose? Please uh, share your options uh, in the chat. I want to learn from you. The voice is quite low, Julia. If someone is saying um, infrastructure bonds, uh, uh, want to see more options, which one you, would you choose between the, 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 the four options? <clears throat> anyone, uh, and anyone who is uh, willing to 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 respond can respond uh, quickly by raising the answer. I've seen money market funds, money market funds. Yes, the question was uh, if you had a thousand dollars right now, where would you put your money? Keep sharing your options. <laughs> yes, um, thank you so much uh, once again. Uh, today you have a very experienced speaker on matters uh, finance. He's uh, an amazing guy, and when I was looking at his portfolio, I was really amazed uh, that someone uh, found the wisdom uh, 14 years ago, and he has been empowering people. Um, really a, a great thing, Mr. Robert, you're doing and your team, and we're grateful tonight to have you to talk to us about these important matters. Even as medics, how do we uh, ensure that uh, the end game is having financial balance, uh, balancing our life? If you come to Africa, we look at uh, are you giving time to fitness, which is also another form of uh, wealth, family, and other things that revolve around your, your will. So I hope you learn a few things and make better choices going forward. All right. Uh, Mr. Robert, if you're ready, you can take it away. Thank you uh, so thank much for the responses. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Vincent, right? Yes, yes, Muema. Muema. Oh, thank you very much, Vincent and team, and especially John for inviting me. So today I want to use a little bit of a different approach because I know you are extremely smart people. Because of that, I'll try uh to do my uh presentation or articulation uh in not more than 30 minutes but i hope at the end of it all i'd, I'd have painted for you a picture of what personal finance and investing is all about uh so so my name is robert Chieng. i'm also uh from a technical field just like you my background is in uh computer technology uh, that's what I did in undergrad. Uh, then when I started working, I worked at Airtel. Uh, later on, went to the National Treasury, then Equity Bank. Uh, from Equity Bank, I went to Gulf African Bank, then Guarantee Trust Bank. And I left Guarantee Trust Bank uh, as head of IT in March 2021. So uh, I, I believe uh, that the people here, if I'm not wrong, most of you are between the age bracket of 24 to 44. Is that true? Like 80 or 90% of you? So uh, I'll try to focus on that, but then talk about the whole life journey uh, from your 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. Yeah. So uh, talking about my own story, uh, when when I started working, what happened? Uh, is that uh, given that I was from a technical field, 
uh, in IT or information technology, you can actually leave school by the second year and you'll be as good as someone who has graduated in fourth year. Uh, because what happens, we do, we do a lot of technical stuff in first year and second year. Then now from third year and fourth year, they're just preparing you for the workplace. They talk about things like organizational skills, you do your project and stuff like that. So during the time for doing projects, my friend and I, we were just two people who decided to venture in a certain technical field known as database administration. So whenever you use anything like M-Pesa, you go to the airport where your data sits is known as a database administrator. And database administrators, they tend to be extremely quiet people because it is a job that doesn't require no noisy people, uh, you know, so they're extremely quiet and hidden within the organizations. We rarely even hear about them. But they are the guys who contain, like they have all the information in this world, sit to the database as status. So when I got now to Airtel, what I realized is that I had the skills, uh, but I needed to do a certification. Yeah, so the lesson there is that sometimes you have to know what you need to monetize your skills. So you can have the skills like street smart, but that field is as technical as medical field. So you cannot come and claim that you are a medic unless you have certain certification. So I started by saving, and at the end of uh, my first year to work at Airtel, I had saved about 200,000 and did the certification. Let me tell you, when I did the certification, one day I was showering and I got six missed call, six missed call. And someone told me that uh, they've gotten an opportunity to do implementation of some software at the National Treasury. And they've been told that I'm the only expert in Kenya. You know, I was scared. So the next day I went very smart with my CV and everything. They told me that you are too serious. You've already gotten the job. So the lesson I learned there is really investing, start with investing in your skills. So you should always know that you are in a marketplace, there are opportunities. And I mentor young people and always tell people, don't get into this thing that people are talking about like Gen Z. You are not a Gen Z. You are either Christine, Joyce or Robert, or Rael, or Resho, or Vincent, and there are so many people who are looking for this opportunity. Like at Abojani, and I'm, I'm an employer of uh, 15 people with seven full-time. Let me tell you, I know the person who is best for a certain job. So because of that, you should always know how you package yourself and skills to ensure that you are someone who can be trusted with outcomes. So if the Gen Z is here, am I making sense? When the job is supposed to be done, when the clients come, if you're working at Java, do you normally care whether someone is a Gen Z, Gen Z, or anything, or you want your coffee? Right? You just want your coffee, right? Yeah, so get that right. So as long as you can be someone who can be trusted with outcome, you'll do well in your career or business because people come, you'll get referrals and stuff like that. So that's very, very important for you to master because money is a byproduct of value that you are creating. So it's value creation. So if you are a medic, what value are you creating for people? And when you are creating values about the skills that you have and the relationships that you build, relationships I cannot overemphasize. I was lucky uh, because of student politics, I was a, a, a campus rep. I was in the student council. So it taught me to build skills. And I never regret that. I remember there's a time we went to the burial of a colleague's dad. I came back, showered in the morning, did exams and got a D. That's the only D I've ever gotten in my life. But it doesn't matter. It really creates trust with people. People will trust you that this is someone who is there for us. And the social capital, you'll enjoy it for the rest of your life. So wherever you are, it's very, very important to have the mental capital, uh, the skills that you have, and then the social capital. Who do you know and how do they know you? Can they remember you if opportunities come up in situations or in places? Very, very important. So once you've packaged yourself that way, you'll get into the workplace. And in the workplace, your job is to ensure that you make your boss and the organization succeed. When you hear the organization that announced good results and is because of you and other colleagues, you are likely to do well in your career. So as you move up, uh, up the ladder, you'll find that you become someone who is even recognized in your field, in the community. People know that Dr. So-and-so's clinic is the best in this and that. And that also tends to come with a lot of money and income. So once you see it that way, then you see that money is a byproduct of that. 
But now once we get the money, we need to be good custodians of it. Yeah, so quickly before we talk about money market, uh, we came up with this uh, framework uh, because we have a very big Facebook group. It has over 90,000 people now and on Twitter I have over 75,000 people, uh, LinkedIn quite a lot of people. And the questions that they ask, they tend to fall into these three categories. So always start with the mindset. So mindset is to tell you that personal finance is personal. So it is as personal as it gets. And that's why I don't call myself a financial literacy advocate. I'm more of a financial planner. Financial planner is that I'm focused on an individual's outcome because I know personal finance is very personal. And I'm also humble enough to know that not everyone cares about personal finance and money. And because of that, not everyone will ever get wealthy. So if you think about it, for us who have been, been in the field, We've even been insulted by people and told to hell with you. I don't want to hear about this nonsense until someone makes a mis mistake. Now they humble themselves and they come to your inbox and say, now I'm ready even to pay X amount of money for your one hour because I've realized I didn't know things. So because of that, we really want to focus on the mindset. So you have to know and agree and accept that money is important to you and attribute the meaning of money to you. So because of that, before we proceed, I want to know from you, what does money mean to you? So you can type on the chat, because that's the most important question when it comes to personal finance and investing, because it is what will be driving you to set your money aside. It is what will be driving you to invest. So Caroline says freedom, Joan freedom. I hope you are not copying each other, the first three people freedom, so it can't be the same for everyone. Security time, great. So ladies and gentlemen, once you've made that piece that money means freedom to you, money means time to you and security, that's the reason you'll be investing. So that really needs to be clear because if you are clear with where you are setting aside the 10,000 Kenya shillings per month, then it means you are on the right track. You'll be doing more of putting that money aside to buy you time. Remember, like personally, I told you, I left corporate in Feb 2021. So March 2021 is the first time in over 10 years that I didn't receive a salary. Ladies and gentlemen, it feels different when you don't have a salary versus when you have a salary. And that's why now you'll enjoy that for the past 10 years, you've been saving and setting money aside. You put it in, in infrastructure bond or treasury bills and bond, and now it is bringing you money. Like today, on 11th of November, today, I received a coupon from infrastructure bond that I invested in 2022. It comes every May and November, and there's another one in June and December. So those investments that I made, they're now able to take care of my livelihood, livelihood in terms of my family, things like school fees. And that gave me freedom to try out a startup, which is a journey. So that freedom that we are talking about, you have to buy it. You buy it with money. And you buy it with money by putting money aside on a regular basis. So that the money in money market and infrastructure bond or treasury bills and bonds can now help you to achieve that meaning that you put money to be for. So it's very, very important for you to know that. And that's why we say uh, mindset is the most important thing. Before you even go to money market or treasure bills and bond, please know what money means to you. Because your friends will tell you, piga sherehe, right? So if you piga sherehe, what will happen? You, will, you won't enjoy the freedom of time, you know. And by the way, there's no guarantee. Some people seeing life work balance this. I tell you, there's no guarantee that if you work 8 to 5 p.m., that you'll achieve financial freedom. Actually, the poor have retired. They've reached retirement age, but they're still working. So the only thing that guarantees freedom is money. Because money is a tool that can then buy you time. Then with time, you can do whatever you want. So it's very, very important, ladies and gentlemen, to ensure that you have the right mindset. The right mindset can actually mean you saying that since I'm 24 and I'm young, and I'm single, let me spend an extra one hour per day after eight to five doing my own personal things. And because of that, you accelerate your journey towards creating more value, and then you create more value, you earn more. And then you cruise past your 30s, and then 40s, you start consolidating your assets, then 50, you can retire. There's no way it is written that you have to wait till you're 65. So the mindset is very, very powerful. And remember, it is a personal journey. Very, very, very personal. So, and it's very important to also know the season that you are in 
so that the mindset will let you know that I'm in this season. This is why I'm doing that, this and that. This is why I'm saving for my masters because I've met so many medics. I believe in your field. Masters really matter. It doesn't matter much in IT. You know, in IT, you tend to go with professional certification. So it's very, very important to know that. Then the second thing and why we are here today is the skill set. So skill set is to say, just like you succeeded in the medic field, you know, by being structured, by doing things in a certain way, you also need to learn that money is a different field. So because of that, you need to know how money works. You need to know how financial markets work. You need to know how different instruments work before you put your money in. And let me tell you with a lot of humility, there's a lot of a big chance that being unskilled when it comes to money is the default for most of us. It happened to me when I got my first job. So given that I was in a very specialized field, the salary was good. So for the first three years, I spent like, I wasted like over 3 million inside houses that didn't work. But when I started putting money regularly in a circle and money market, I realized that by being consistent, I can, achieve, I can achieve a lot. And I sat down with a financial planner who told me that if I just put 50K per month in 10 years, I'll have 10 million. I could not believe it. So you can try it out. If you do like 100K per month in 10 years, you'll have 22 million plus in money market fund, for example. If you have 22 million, you'll have like passive income of 200K per month. So that's how money works. So with skill set now, you need to begin with the end in mind. Don't just say for the sake of it, know where you are headed. Do you want to buy a house? Then do you want to achieve financial freedom? Then what do you want to prioritize? So very, very important. So it's very important to know that skill set is the first layer of risk management. Because if you don't have skill set, then people with the easiest job in financial markets, they're not regulated players, they're the scammers because they know very well that Robert or Dr. Joan might be earning X amount of money. People have an idea of your salary bracket. So instead of wasting time uh, targeting just nobody's uh, in the CBD, they'll come to where you guys hang out for lunch, they'll convince you, then they'll get your money. Isn't, isn't it an easy job? It is. Their job is very easy because they're relying on people who earn money, but they lack skill sets. So it's very, very important. Then finally, we talk about tool sets. Tool set is to say, if you've understood money market funds, for example, then you need to open the money market fund account and get started you get rewarded by doing in this field of money you don't get rewarded by knowing a lot and doing nothing so it's doing it is doing that is the game that's why there is no correlation between people knowing a lot of stuff and money it is more of people doing because as you do you learn and doing is the best motivator like if you put fifty thousand kenya shillings in a money market account next month you put another 50 it is 100k the kind of motivation that you have is totally different with someone who is just wallowing in theory, arguing over real estate, you know, money market, treasure, bills and bonds. So doing is really very, very important. So I hope now I've set the stage for us to now start discussing money market funds and treasury bills and bonds. So let me know if that's the case uh, before we proceed. So it's always important to know why you are doing something. So, so you always tell us as medics the things that you want us to do. And I believe we can agree, because we are the experts in the medical field, that human beings, they tend to like painkillers more than vitamins. Is that true? Like if you tell people, you know, jog, <laughs> they'll say, stop lecturing me about my life. But now once they're in a problem, now they listen to you, to the painkiller that you give them, they'll tend to listen. So is, is that true, like even from your field? That people, the, 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 thing that you, the things that you tell us about prevention, you know, as ordinary men and women, we are like unlikely to hear, you know, you, you, you know and you are the expert, but you never listen. So money also works that way. The simple things like just saving, like if you're earning 50K, just set aside 10K. We are not saying you set aside everything, you know, like you can go, go have fun, you know, there's rent. We're just saying even 5,000, you know, 5,000 per month is 60K in a year. You'll find people earning 100K struggling during Christmas holiday. You wonder why. So we are just saying plan and 
have what we call a balanced life financially, where you are paying your bills, you're having fun and living life, and also saving and investing for tomorrow. So it's very, very important. And when talking about the meanings, we've said there's health and fitness, there's business and career, there's family and friends, relationships, finance, personal development, fun, spiritual, you know. So just ensure that you balance your life so that you have meaning in life. So we've seen that there are some young people who are struggling. They're saying that all they want is fun. Then later on, we realize that their life is meaningless, you know. And some people who are religious will tell you that work is actually divine. There are people who found meaning in life through work, right? Through their entrepreneurship, through charity and stuff like that. That's why the balance is very, very important. And there are also people who are billionaires, they're multimillionaires, but they have no meaning in life. They're very sad. And so it's very, very important to attach a meaning in life and your money can help you with that. So it's very, very important, ladies and gentlemen, like we tell you, you might find someone who you think is not so rich, but they're so happy. But someone might be so rich, but their life is meaningless. So it's very, very important to know that. So quickly, going to money market funds. So uh, when you look at money market funds, uh, they are short-term instruments that are regulated by capital markets authorities. So if you want to know anything about money market funds, just go to Capital Markets Authority's website. So usually it is good for you to know where the source of information is. So from there, uh, like I can tell you, there's a report that they share on a regular basis. So I want to make this like a demina, which is a demonstration, because I don't want to bore you guys with a lot of theory. So you come here and find here, CMA, they'll have what they call CMA Statistical Bulletin. So just want to quickly check it through. So they always have reports, ladies and gentlemen. I've seen a lot of people sharing with you things that are their opinion, but I always say them semaquelli is Capital Markets Authority. Okay, so they release their reports on a quarterly basis. Then when you come, there's a table here where they show the money market funds. So it's always good to get things from primary source. Remember, Abu Jani or anyone is not the primary source of this information. It is the Capital Markets Authority. So let's see. So there's a table here where they call them collective investment schemes. Great. So I hope you can see this. So this is as at June, uh, and they call them collective investment schemes. So under collective investment schemes, what it means is that the funds are pulled together, okay? The funds are pulled together from all of us who are investors. So once they've been put together, the people who run those funds are known as fund managers. So you can write that down. So the fund managers are the ones who run these funds. And there are asset management companies such as CIC Asset Management, Sunlam Investment East Africa. So they have that. So that is an investment firm that also has money market funds. Then you have like NCBA, Britam, ICL, and Old Mutual. So they're all here. So it's always important to get information from the source. So this is based on their size uh, in terms of how much people have trusted them with. And this is just market share. So uh, this is percentage change in the fund, yeah. So it's very, very important to know that there's a list of money market funds and this is the total size. So always try to see that there are quite a number. And then now try to know how do I select the best one? So, and how do they work? The way they work is that once you put your money in a money market fund, so the first thing that you need to know, the fund has to be regulated by Capital Market Authority. They can tell you that they're regulated, but you have to come to the Capital Market Authority's website and confirm. So that's the first step in financial intelligence. Then as fund managers, they have something we call fact sheet. So they have something they call fact sheet. So fact sheet will contain the details 
on who is their custodian. So custodian is like the bank that manages the funds. So the fund manager makes the investment decisions, but the custodian is where the money moves in. When you send your money, you send it to the custodian bank. When you're withdrawing, the money moves from the custodian bank to your account. Then as an investor, you are known as unit holder because you have what we call unit trust. Then some someone who is also very important is the trustee. So the trustee as unit holders, there's someone who is more experienced than all of you and they're watching over the funds on your behalf. So the trustees, like for example, you'll find that most money market funds tend to have KCB bank as their trustee. So they're like someone who is watching over the fund. So you have to know who the trustee of the fund is, who the auditor is and who the custodian is. So very, very important when looking at that. So those are things that you don't take for, for granted. And then the fund manager now is the asset management company. And they do have their annual general meeting that you need to attend and know what is going in those funds. So in terms of the legal framework, it's very, very important that you know those. And also try to look at the size of the fund and see how many people have trusted the money market fund or the asset management company in terms of the size of the fund. Very, very important. What I want to tell you, money is very tribal. Money moves in small places, like the circles of the same, same people. That's how it works. It is never noisy. It is never where everyone is. So always know that there's something that the rich or wealthy already know about money. So try to also look at the size of the fund. Then the interest rate should be reasonable. Like here in Kenya currently, they're between 12 to 17%. And there's no correlation between interest and how good a fund is. So it doesn't mean that the fund that is giving you highest interest is the best. So it, I hope that is very clear, ladies and gentlemen, because all the funds that have collapsed in this country, they're the ones offering highest returns. So there's no correlation between a fund giving you high, the highest return and how good it is. So I want you to know that from day one. Start by looking at the regulatory framework, who is running the fund, who is the fund manager, who is the trustee, who is the custodian, what is the size? The size really matters. So you really need to know that because the, the person that you're investing in has to have financial backers. So financial backers simply means that if Robert is running a Bojani and things are tough, I, there's someone I can run to. Do you get it? Like a godfather. Very, very important for you to look at such funds that have like godfathers. So maybe they have some insurance companies that is backing them or big shareholders, something like that. Very, very important because we've seen a money market fund collapse in this country and it had less than 1 billion in funds. If they had a backer, maybe that company would have come through for them. So it's always good to learn that, that the first thing is risk management, heritage and the strength of the fund. So that's very, very important. So uh, if you want to look at fact sheet, so I told you I want to make this as practical as possible. So out of the top five, please give me a name. I don't want to choose any of them, but I want you to give me a name, then you can look at its fact sheet. And that would not mean in any way that you're making any recommendation. It's just look at things practically. Okay, I've seen people typing CAC. So that doesn't mean we are recommending CAC, okay? It's just to, we are learning. Remember, we are intelligent enough to know that we are learning. So you go and type fact sheet. So I think these are as at 17th of last month. So that's pretty recent. So you come here, you see the fact sheet are there. So what are they saying in terms of their fact sheet? Are we together? Fund manager is CIC, okay? Launch date, it is June 2011. So it's about 13 years old. Trustees who, remember I said trustees like a big company that is watching over the fund on your behalf. Are we together? So you must ensure that trustees also an organization that you trust. Okay. Then custodian is COP custodial services run by COP Bank. Do you trust COP? Audit is PwC. Minimum investment is 5,000. Additional is 1,000. Then maintenance fee is 2%. Annual management fee. Distribution monthly. So what this means is that your interest, 
your money will earn interest on a daily basis. It is accumulated and paid into your money market account on a monthly basis. So there's a bit of compounding on an, a monthly basis. So key benefits they'll give you there. Then there's the performance. You see, so CIC has been close to 91-day treasury bills and bonds. So 91-day treasury bills and bond has higher interest, but it is not as liquid as CIC money market. So remember, when we talk about personal finance, ladies and gentlemen, you need to have your goals and match them with the financial instrument. Like personally today, when I received my coupon for infrastructure bond, I don't know whether you can see my the screen on my phone. Anyway, but what happened when I received it from Central Bank, it went to my equity bank account. Then I sent it to my CSC money market account. And I what happened is that I got an alert that I put it there. So I have like three money market accounts for different reasons. So once the money is in that account, what will happen? I'll now think of what to do with it. Maybe I want to do long-term investment and stuff like that. So that's where the money lands. And there's the liquidity element of money market funds that I can get to my money in two to four, in two to four working days. So it's very, very important to know that. And there are low risk. So if you are someone who, if you invest in shares, you won't sleep, I would say, wait, take your time to start with the money market fund, for example. So if you need your money in the next two weeks or one month, then you need probably to put it in money market fund accounts because there's that flexibility. So money market fund account is like a teacher. It teaches you about saving and investing practically and building the habit of setting money aside on a consistent basis. So very, very important. Then from there, you can say some of it you can put in real estate, right? Then some of the money that you have acc accumulated there, you can put in infrastructure bond. Some of it you can put in shares. So is that clear so far before we proceed, ladies and gentlemen? The role that money market fund plays in your account as a starting point. This is like a teacher, you know. You cannot buy some of these lessons. You have to put your money on a regular basis so that you get used to it. And that's why you find people with money, they tend to be very silent and quiet because they've done things practically and they know that it is not hype that if you put 20K per month in a money market, at the end of the year, you'll have 240K, you know, plus interest. And if you continue putting it, you'll have a lot of money. So that's very, very important. Because I've seen people with very polarized view. They say money market funds are for losers, but they are always broke. They don't even have 10,000 anywhere. And they're always losing money inside houses and high-risk investments because they don't know that. Even for us entrepreneurs, for example, like June, let me tell you, June and July, it was a tough month for us because of Mandamano. Where did we get the money to pay salaries? Some of us went to our money market company money market account and pay the salaries. Then things resumed to normalcy from August and stuff like that. So you can see it acts like a bridge that can help you to sort some short-term problems, you know. But again, it can also be the seed fund that funds your long-term investment. Because some people have mind blocks. They tell me, but Robert Infrastructure Bond, I need 100K to start. Then I ask them, how much do you have that you can save on a monthly basis? 10K. So I'll tell them, you do 10K for 10 months, you'll be able to do infrastructure bond. So you must respect where you are and move step by step. A piece of land might be 500k. You might not have it in a day, but in two years, you might have had it in money market. Then now you purchase your piece of land. So when you think about it that way, then you see now the role that money market funds play in your portfolio. And it's very, very straight, straightforward. So whether it is a, a Britam, you know, Jubilee that you decided, please look at their background, look at the companies running them. And please, if you can, please walk the journey with me. Never invest in a fund because it is giving high returns. You better have more than that reason, okay? Because the banks that went down in 2015 and 2016, they are giving the highest returns in fixed deposit funds. Do you remember that? People who are in their 30s, probably you remember that, right? And one of the popular funds that came and said that banks were lazy, they don't know this and that, and COVID came and they complained that the only, the only people who are affected with COVID, they're the ones who are giving the highest return. So because of that, you have to mix risk management versus return. Because you're already taking a risk to do your job or business. So don't again take too much risk in money market funds where you're investing. So I hope, are we together ladies and gentlemen? Because I don't want someone to get excited about returns, 
then tomorrow you lose everything. So always know that an investor is someone who is logical. So this is the last field that you need emotions. So it's about logics. Have a checklist and know what you are getting into. So don't invest because it is the most popular. Remember, we've come here step by step and we've seen how we are looking at things. So I hope that is clear. So we're together so far in terms of money market fund and the role that it plays. So quickly before we proceed, I think I need to do something here. So on the chat, someone type for me how much you think would be uh, enough for you in terms of passive income. It doesn't need to be your exact amount, but a reasonable amount that if you have a passive income today, you won't need to work or will just be working for fun. Please type for me per month because I want to teach you how to begin with the end in mind. Oh my goodness, Dr. Arizzi, 500,000. You'll make some people run away from the webinar. Can you use 100K, for example, for illustration purposes? Is that okay? Ah, great. So, so ladies and gentlemen, let's say now you are 30 years old, okay? And you start putting 50K per month in a money market fund. So, and 50K per month in 10 years, how much will you have? Can you type in the chat how much will you have with that calculator? From the calculator, if you put 50K per month, how much will you have? C10, year 10. I hope you can see my screen. Year 10 is how much? To the far right, it is 10.5, right? Great. Yeah. So now let's assume now, Mr. Tony, you are 40 years old and you have 10.5M and you are not earning any money, you know? So 10.5M and you are not earning any money. You are not adding any money. Remember, it started with 50K and then doing 50K per month. In 10 years, it landed us to how much? To 10.5. So now let's say I have that 10.5. You see, I'm getting about after tax and everything, 89K. And I've used a modest rate of 12%. So you are assured of getting that on a monthly basis. So that's why we say begin with the end in mind. That's the value of 10 million. So is that clear why you need to begin with the end in mind? Those people who are saying that they want to have 300K, let me tell you, you have to match your ambition with your savings, sir. So you better start putting 100K per month now. Because you cannot have such a big ambition and you are not saving a lot. Where will you get 30M? So the person who will be doing 10K, sorry, 100K per month, for you in 10 years, you'll have 21M. You get it. And you'll have achieved 32M in how many years? 13 years. So with 32M, you can get that 300K per month. That's how you should be thinking. Begin with the end in mind. So Betty, that tax, so the amount that you're using on the right is after. So calculator I'll share with the with the Joan. But I hope you are clear. So these people here who are saying you need one M per month, my friend, show us your journey towards 100 M. Are we together? The person who said one M per month. So that's how money works. You cannot have only the ambition, but no way to get to the <laughs> ambition. If you want 500 K per month, show me your journey towards 50 M. Are we clear, everyone? If you want 50K per month, show me your journey to 5M. Does it make sense? Always begin with the mind, end in mind because sometimes you have a big ambition but no discipline to, to arrive at that number. So are you clear before you proceed? So it's very, very important that you know that. So even in this journey, you can say once you hit 2M, maybe 1M can go to infrastructure bond. You know infrastructure bond and slightly higher. Then the interest you get from infrastructure bond, you put to money market. So it keeps growing and growing. You know, you can even get to things like shares when you get dividend to invest. So very, very important to for us to realize that you need to be as logical as possible. If you run your private clinic, as you pay your employees, can you create an employee known as your personal fund? and be giving that employee 250K per month because you may think sometimes you get good money. Let me show you the magic of 250K per month. Mr. or Mr. Daktari, Mr. or Mrs. Daktari, 250K per month 
in 10 years, our portfolio of 52M, 52M will be giving you passive income of 500K per month. So you better start working towards your retirement and passive income. That is the soft life of money. When the passive income is coming home, you are relaxed and it is just coming. So I've spoken to you from different scenarios, whether you have little or a lot, but please do yourself a favor, be consistent in your saving and investing. And I would rather, even if you have a potential of doing 500K per month, you can say let 200K do other things, but ring fence even 100K per month or 10K or 50. That one, just ring fence it and save it consistently. If all other things go wrong, that 100K per month is what can save you. Does it make sense? Please have some money that you're putting somewhere consistently. Please, in this game, I'm not a motivation speaker. I've shown you the path. That's what my financial planner told me over 10 years ago, and it worked. Because now people overthink. They think there's a big deal that is going to come. If you think a big deal is going to come, let me tell you, I worked at the National Treasury. I know the deals, people, that the deals didn't work for. So, Cynthia, the passive income, it is time, it is, it has no end. It keeps coming. Remember that 50K is, it gives you, that 50M, it gives you 500K per month. In fact, if you don't withdraw it, it even grows. So passive income is like a seed that you put somewhere and it is giving you a salary. So I hope now this journey towards 10M 2050 also teaches you, Mr. or Mrs. Daktari, if you're working towards 20M and you get an opportunity of 30 or three of 3M, you're working towards 20M and you get an opportunity of 3M. Please don't start thinking that you are very rich. Know that the 3M is your journey towards 20M. Are we together? And the 3M should accelerate your journey towards 20M. Because sometimes what happens to professionals and entrepreneurs, if you get car name, suddenly you start feeling very rich. So Peter, if you have 10M today, you can live for the rest of your life with a guaranteed income of about 100K per month. That's how it works. That's why the ultimate prize is working towards that number. We call it financial freedom number. Is it 5M for you? Is it 10M for you? Is it 20M? Please work hard towards that number, Mr. Peter. You'll have fun. My financial planner taught me that that is the biggest lesson I've ever had. So we together. So what is happening, Mr. Daniel? So for, for money market, remember, I've told you work with established players. I see land, for example, is 60 years old. Britam is over 50 years old. Please work with established players. And like I've told you, diversify. Like personally, I have two money market funds and a third one, third one acts as an emergency fund. So this long-term fund, I call it no temptation account. I don't want to touch it no matter what. That's why my emergency fund is in a different account. So 5M can give you about 50K per month. So Joanne can share with you my personal line so that anyone who wants to reach, you reach me. And remember, for a financial planner, I only deal with serious people. <laughs> you remember, because I'm not a financial literacy advocate to convince someone that money is important to them. For me, is after you've decided money is serious to you, now you want to focus. Because I really care about success of my clients. And that is where Bojani grows. Because the people I have with you are always growing, you know. Like on 23rd, we have a conference and people can afford to pay and we grow together. When we have tough times, like people are scared about Eurobond, I bring speakers and we are guided on where to invest, you know, and we keep growing because it is a long life journey. Great. So now we'll quickly go to treasury bills and bonds. So again, the source of treasury bills and bonds is CBK. Are we together? Central Bank of Kenya. So money market fund, you go to CMA website, look at their statistical bulletin or reports about the funds. Then please ensure that you check the best. So someone is saying are MMF Sharia compliant? Uh, Rama for Sharia compliant, again, you can contact me so that I can talk to some of the funds. Okay, so now let's go to treasury bills and bonds. So like I've said, ladies and gentlemen, 
before you think of treasury bills and bonds, I would really be happy if at least we have a money market fund. And I hope that is clear because remember, the basic level of starting things is from money market. Please don't skip the steps. Let's not be too smart. Start with money market funds. That's why if I have an emergency this week, treasury bills and bonds won't help me. I won't get my money from there. Are we clear? So start with money market and start with an emergency fund. It is what builds an, uh, an abundance mindset. Once you have an emergency fund, let me tell you, your thinking will change. You'll start thinking long term. And you can afford the luxury of doing treasury bills and bonds. Because remember, emergency fund changes the kind of problems that you have. You won't have petty problems of CG 10,000 or 50K. You can quickly go to an, your emergency fund and you solve them. So that is when your money turns problems into mere inconveniences. But if you don't have emergency fund, you cannot do long term. You'll start investing in a chama today or a piece of land tomorrow. You have an emergency, you want to sell it and uh, throw away price. So start with the basics. Emergency fund where money market fund can be. And think of money market fund as a money bucket where you can accumulate money and say, no, let me take 20% of this fund in money market to treasury bills and bond. So treasury bills are short term instruments. You can invest in terms of three months, six months, and one year. So I know people talk of those theories, oh, I need minimum of 50K. Let me tell you from this class, let's talk 100K and above when you think of treasury bills and bonds. Are we together? And if, even if better, you can set your own target. Like personally, I never put less than 500K in treasury bills and bonds. Actually, I put even more because aren't the interest when it comes, it makes sense to me. Does it make sense, ladies and gentlemen? Because like, let's say you put one M, in infrastructure bond at 15% and they're paying 15%. 15% is 150K per annum. So it means every six months I'll be getting how much? 75K. So that would be exciting me because I'll be putting it in my money market fund. But if I put 100K, 15% per annum is 15K. So every six months I start getting 15, 15K divided by two, 7,500. So it doesn't excite me. So that's where we say build the journeys. So start with the money market fund, build the capital. Don't invest in the academic way that you are just doing treasury bills to tick a box. You are doing it so that it makes sense to your portfolio. But treasury bills, they mature within one year. Uh, it could be three months, six months, or one year. And know that when you are getting into any investment, you should in match it to the investment time horizon. So treasure, treasury bills are short term. Now, if you want to do long term, one year and above is when you think of treasury bonds. So remember, you should have short term portfolio and long term. Long term is also good because you tend to get slightly higher interest. So it's always good to also have long term investment option. That's where treasury bonds come into play. So treasury bonds, there are two types of bonds. Currently, whenever you see a bond known as FXD something, that is, it is called normal bond. And in normal bonds, when it is one year to nine years, they tax you at 10, sorry, 15% withholding tax. When it is 10 years and above, withholding tax is 10%. So people who invest in the long term, they tend to get favorable returns. Returns are slightly higher and even taxes are friendly. Then there's another type of bond known as infrastructure bond. So infrastructure bond will hear IFB. So IFB, they are tax exempt. So those who are complaining that the government is overtaxing, that is valid, but also take advantage of such opportunities. Like for me, all my investments are in infrastructure bond. Please don't mention it anywhere because that's where I take advantage of the tax exemption. So it means if you put 1 million there and it is 15%, 15% you get a clean 150K every year, but they're paying every six months. So every six months I'll be getting half of the 15%, which is 7.5%. So I'll be getting 75K every six months. Then if it is 10 years, at the end of the 10 years, I'll get my principal back. So it's very, very clear to know that there are two types of bond. The fixed are normal bonds and infrastructure bonds. So whenever you find fixed FXD, so when you come here and you find that, they're saying there's a bond on offer you see these ones, these FXD. So these ones, they'll show you the taxation and the taxation you'll find that uh, it will also be mentioned in this, what is known as prospectus. 
and you'll find that if it is less than 10 years, it is 15% with the holding tax. If it is above 10 years, it is 10% with the holding tax. But if it is AFB something, infrastructure bond, it is tax exempt. So that's why we say under skill set, you should use the skill set to make investment decisions because we have options. So that's very, very clear. So someone is saying, uh, do I think the treasury plan to tax IFB will take effect? Even if it takes effect, it is not a big deal. They're only thinking of 5%. Let me tell you, that is still a good investment, Daniel, right? Only taxing 5%, that's still a good offer. So remember, even there's some investment where they tax 15% and people are still making good money. So, so this thing of people complaining online, don't focus on it. You focus on your portfolio and, and how to build it. Because when we invest in shares, for example, dividends are taxed at only 5%. That's a very good offer by the way. Like Standard Chartered last year paid me 29 Kenya shillings per share. And they tax, they tax only 5% from dividends. So what is happening in the investment space, there are some tax-friendly investment options. So have a mix of that and take advantage. Remember, you are the boss. The portfolio doesn't belong to people on Twitter or your friends. It is for you as an individual. The government was talking about starting to tax IFB. So I believe I've answered that. So Rob, Robina, if it is to happen, it will be for future investment. Not, not the current. It is futuristic. So for those who are thinking of children products for money market, please you can inbox me. I think I've shared my number. Once you are ready, I can share with you the link. So currently we have two money market funds, CSC and ICA, they have for children where you can open for your child. But you can inbox me uh, if you need that. So someone is talking about uh, the premium. So I would say as much as possible, for us mere mortals, mere mortals include myself, we are retail investors. Please, as much as possible, avoid secondary market. Are we together? Secondary market is after the bond has been issued, it is being sold in the secondary market. What happens there? People are so smart so that they can sell the bond. It is like Marikiti market where I can say, since I bought this bond at 1M, I'm selling it to you at 1.1M. And I'll say, since you are desperate and you have a bond of 1M, I only have 900K. So as much as possible, avoid secondary market. If you have to do it, please, I would rather even you give me a phone call. Are we together? Just know for us ordinary people, just do primary market. And primary market, the bond every month. And even infrastructure bond, we tend to have at least three in a year. So for me, I only look at infrastructure bonds alone. But I've never done anything in the secondary market. Are we together? Yeah. So I hope we are, we are, we are clear. So I'll, I'll stop there. I'll stop there and take any questions. So that is my ro number, Robert. And please, please, I only take serious questions. People who have already decided they're going to make an investment decision. So Robina, what I've said, if you can avoid secondary, you know, this class is a master class. So what we are trying to give you is wisdom. What to avoid? Like there's really no need for me to do secondary market. Sir, whether bank is selling it or not, if you can avoid it, you'll be better off. That's what we are trailing you here. I've been in the market and I've seen people have told, please don't go to secondary market or don't do bonds before money market. Then they have an emergency. They have 1.5 million bonds now. They need it immediately. Someone will tell them, since you need your 1.5 immediately, I only have 1.4 and they sell it at a loss. So such things happen. That's why you say go step by step and just try to do primary market. Now go to central bank website and open an account for yourself. It is free to open. Then you can bid here and CBK has a lot of resources. Also in our master class, which is just 6,000, 6, our master is 6,000. We teach about these things. Then you take charge. There's no need for you to have an intermediary when investing in bonds. It's straightforward. So someone is saying secondary market. Like I've said, like I've said, if you want to learn, 
follow your coach. There's no need to do secondary market if you can avoid, because it is straightforward. I came here, open an account, and I bought bonds worth over 1 million. Here, straightforward. No broker and interest come back to my bank account. I put it in money market. Straightforward. I don't need any third party. Because the third party will charge you a premium of 3 or 4%. You want to know. Get together, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So thank you very much. I don't want to go beyond time. Uh, so someone is saying, uh, can government default? So what we are saying, ladies and gentlemen, there's no investment that is risk-free. If you put money in your house, Roba, you can get some bad people who can get into your house and take the money. If you put in, there's nothing that is risk-free. What we are saying, do analysis like you said in money market. And for the government securities, for the locals, it's really difficult for them to default. Yeah, because local, what happens that in worst case scenario, they can even print cash. And remember, we're talking about diversification. We are not saying put all your money in treasury bills and bonds. Personally, I have some piece of land in terms of real estate. I have two businesses that I've invested in. I have money market fund. I have treasury bonds. I don't have any treasury bill. You know, some diversifying, but don't just diversify for the sake of it. Know where you are putting your money. So the only thing that can help you with the risk management is a bit of diversification. If you are an entrepreneur, you can also see me. I need to help you open a money market account and start investing for your business. Don't let all the money sit in your bank account. Start investing for it. So what happens if you need your money and you borrow a bond? So Ruth, if you have to sell your bond in a secondary market, then now you need an investment bank. What we are trying to say, never be in a desperate position. And that's why for me, only 30% of my investments are in treasury bonds. I have money market funds, you know, I have shares and stuff like that. So if you are ever to sell your bonds in secondary market, let it be the last resort. Are there way other that are, that are TGS? So Daniel, once you invest, you have to do SWIFT or RTGS to CBK. So currently it is through a bank account. So your RTGS or SWIFT. Is it possible to insure investments, e.g. treasury? So Charles, currently, if you want insurance, no, you cannot insure your treasury bills and bonds against risk. What the insurance you can take it is diversification, okay? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm seeing a lot of technical questions, which I believe if I answer will confuse people. So, Joan, I think what I'll do, I'll share with you the poster for our Jan masterclass people can join. And also those who are interested in our conference, we are having a conference at Radisson Blue. And the first speaker is one of you. Dr. John Gikonyo. So please, my doctor, come because you've made the doctor to be the first speaker. It is an honor to your field. People rarely listen to doctors when it comes to money matters, but Dr. Gikonyo is coming. So I'm urging you to come. Uh, let me see if the details are here. It is on 23rd of November at Radisson Blue Hotel. So Joanne again will share this poster. So the if you are not an alumni, you pay 9,500, but an alumni pay 7,500 for the whole day event. Uh, what I would say for people who are here and you pay before Friday, I've given you the friendly rate of 7,500. So you are going to have speakers such as John Gashoro of NCBA. Uh, we are going to have brands such as Safaricom, ABSA, you know, NCBA. We are going to have a CLN group and it's a whole day of learning. So if you like, you can join but also we'll have our masterclass in Jan. I believe Joanne can share with you. So learn learning skill set. So once you are armed with the skill set, then you can see the opportunities that you can take. Thank you. And I hope I've not gone beyond time. So someone is asking me about Tamansa X. So for Mansa X, I'll not comment about it. It is not in the list of money market funds. Uh, that we discussed today. So it's not in that list of money market funds. Yeah. Thank you. Wow.
what a wonderful session, uh, Mr. Robert. I've picked so many things. I've picked so many things, and I hope uh, that all the participants tonight have learned a few things that are going to really change the way you approach your personal finance. Most importantly, as mentioned, mindset becomes really important. And um, as I was just going through the class, I reflected on this verse. Uh, is um, first Colossians. Um, that must be first Colossians, huh? first chapter, verse 16. As we do this, remember, uh, all things we are created uh, uh, in heaven and earth, those that are visible and invisible, all the authorities were created through him and for him. So I picked up uh, one thing from Matt, Martin, Martin saying uh, money, what does money, when we ask the question, what does money mean? That money is attached to purpose. As you go through this journey to achieve your financial abundance and freedom, uh, we hope that uh, there's a purpose attached to it. There are uh, many questions coming in. I want to thank uh, Mr. Robert for that insightful uh, session. Uh, Maybe if I can read a few questions, you respond to them quickly. We still have a few minutes on our plate. Okay. Yes, uh, we have some anonymous attendee asking, are these tools diverse enough, seeing as they can collapse in the hands of a poorly run government? Case in point, Ghana, any advice on how to mitigate this risk? Uh, the second question, um, what is the advantage or disadvantage of having a man market fund that compounds daily versus monthly? I think the last one before we pick uh, the, the, the next cohort about management fee, is it on the interest gain or your total investment? Mr. Robert? Okay, thank you. So one too many is so in case I forget anyone you can remind me. So what, what I'll say is that all money market funds, they earn interest on a daily basis, then interest is paid at the end of the month. So they only compound monthly. Then the management fee uh, is always important to ask the company uh, that the fee that they are telling you that they have there, if it is 13 or 14, it is after the management fee. But I know for the ones like uh, Sunlam, ICLAN, Britam, CIC, the ones that they share in the newspapers, they're after management fee. But there are some few money market fund that could be providing misleading rates. So always try to confirm with them. So what we are trying to say, the financial intelligence is that the power is to you to actually now be able to ask some of these questions before you get into the investment. So what was the other? One? What was the other I, question? The other question was, uh, mm. uh, if those tools, if other, uh, in the hands of world run government, um, they can they collapse? They can collapse, no? In the hands yeah. of a world run government. Which money market funds? Yeah, these tools, uh, if they can collapse in the hands of a world run government. Okay, I, th I think what is happening with Kenya, what we are struggling with is that uh, there's a time some people said that you are going to go the Ghanaian way. Let me tell you, if you can predict that the government uh, of Kenya is going to collapse, you'll be a genius. Yeah. No one ever knows. And no one will ever know if that is going to happen. So remember that Paul said with finality that we are going to default the June euro bond. What has happened? The expert and people are still listening to them. So be fair and kind to yourself and listen to the right people. Choose your sources of information carefully. Just like, you know, as a medic, you know, money is like health. Like personally, I'm licensed and Abujan is licensed, but people don't listen to us. We listen to people who do viral stuff. You know, they're not licensed. So that's when we have to blame ourselves. So what you need to know is that for you, from a diversification point of view, diversify, have some hard assets like real estate. You know, if Kenya collapses, it still be here. If Kenya collapses, it might never. You know, 1992, treasury bills and bonds were going at 70 between 1992 and 1995 there, please, you can go and Google by yourself. Returns was at 60%, 70%. That is true story and not a lie. 
Treasury bills and bonds were returning 70%, 60%. That is the time Kenya should have collapsed. Now they're at 18%. So when you read history, you'll really be sober. And there's a Maya mythology that said that people thought that the world was going to end through fire. Still, they prepared way to prevent fire. Fire didn't come. Now they were told it was going to end through flood. They prepared for flood. Floods didn't come. Another way, they thought there were bees or some insects. So there's no one who knows. It's called the, the what is it called? The penultimate preparedness. It doesn't exist in human life. And I hope we can agree on that, right? So the best thing you can do is diversification. And the best thing you can even do, for me, I would rather even upskill. Like personally, last month, I got an opportunity from Nigeria for a bank and I did. Uh, we also have another one from Ethiopia, Zambia. Life is going on. collapse and uh, You know, so that's how things are. Don't be scared, you know, yeah. People tell you everything. If you are scared, I can even create a business model of scaring you and making money. People know that's how they play around with us. Yeah. But once you diversify, like if you have your skills, you know, skills are global. You know, we live in a global world. You know, there's a time, there's a bank in Dubai that asked me to do analysis of Safaricom. Who well, I me, mean, I didn't even know the rate card. So I told them, and I was very proud thinking that I'm smart. I told them that I'm going to charge them $1,000 for the one hour presentation to the board. After I did the presentation, they said the presentation was so good, they paid me $2,000. So let me tell you, that's how the world is. What you need are skills. Once you have skill, you know, skills are even worth more than money. They earn you money every day, every month, right? So why are you scared if you have skills? Yeah. Because those people always come and tell you everything. Once things don't happen, they'll come now with another story, you know. Yeah, so for me, I always believe that in financial markets, just do what you can. Whether it is diversifying to a bit of USD investment option, I can say let 5% of my investment be there. That's all you can do. What is in your control? Because imagine if you're worrying last year, the people who are at bought USD at 160, now it is at 130, they're in paper losses. You know, Bloomberg actually told them that the dollar will go to 200. Did it go? No one knows about the future such. But what you can do to prepare for the future is to have the skills and diversify. So Rahma, like I said, get in touch with me, please. There's no, there are no yes and no answers here because options are available. But it depends with your unique request. And I worked at Gulf African Bank, so I can tell you from Islamic compliant products, is a little bit sophisticated. But there are options in this market. Don't note the money market funds that I shared there. So I hope that helps. Just get in touch with me. Get in touch with Joan. Uh, she can share with you my number. Yeah. So someone is saying treasury bills are coming down. Yes, that is true. Remember, those rates were artificially high. And that's why it's started by telling you money market funds are not about returns. Remember during COVID, they are returning six to 8%. And still people made money there. They're millionaires in money market fund. So rates change because of macroeconomic factors. And I can tell you in 2011 and 2022, treasury bills and bonds went to as high as 22%. So those things are cyclic. What you need to know, you just take an instrument and be consistent. It's not about chasing return. And I've shown you that with 50K per month in 10 years, you're almost guaranteed of getting 10M. Your job is to be consistent because you can want 25% today and in three years you have no money. The principal is gone. So this game is about being consistent because the rates tend to fluctuate, but the winner is the person who respects the game and is consistent. Even your circle then can have a body and give you 6%. Doesn't it happen? Another year, 12%. It happens. That's reality. It's only fiction that promises only good things. So I hope you are clear. So so I hope, uh, so for the yes, calculator, yes, yes. Joan will yes. share. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Then, uh, I hope uh, you guys have been satisfied with those responses. Uh, I can take the, the next three. We still have six minutes to go. Yeah, so, so now people are asking me crypto at the wrong time. Steven, you're asking me cryptocurrency at the wrong, 
long time. Where were you three or five years ago? Anyway, on a lighter note, what I would say about crypto, Stephen, first come and show me your emergency fund. Show me what you've done in things like bonds. You must have a sizable fund, okay? Then now I'll tell you this, Mr. Steven, that cryptocurrency, they're, not, they're known as wildcards. Wildcard means don't put more than 1, 5% of your net worth. Are you together, Steven? If it does the 10x that they promise will do well, if it doesn't work, it won't affect you much. So that's how wildcards are considered. The problem with us, sometimes people take their retirement fund of 20 million put in crypto, realize it was a scam from Brazil. <laughs> then start wishing they left it in infrastructure bond. If you have 20 million, please don't put more than one name there. So that's how they work. Yeah. Please, please, let's help ourselves. Yeah. So always ensure that you live to fight another day even thing go, if things go wrong. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I think I'll pick the next three. There's a question that comes in the DM. How do I build a business as a young medica uh, while working? The next one is, um, do I have to always use uh, an agent when getting a man market fund account? Yeah, so is Esther, you can, yeah, you can get in touch with us if you need to open money market fund account. So what happens sometimes if you have relationship, like we have about 1,500 clients in money market who open through our journey. So if you have relationship, sometimes when you are stuck, you can be helped, but still you can go directly. The only challenge the direct is that when you have issues, then you are just like everyone else and you'll call the call center. So those are personal choices. Then that person who has asked the question on a business, that's a very good question. Actually, John, I'm going to share with you a link, a link that we wrote for medics. Do you guys know I wrote a specific article just for you, how to achieve financial freedom as a private practicing dentist. I wrote specifically for medics. So what you need to know, you see that thing that we are saying where money market fund, you set a fund, that is the seed to build your life on. So what you can do in terms of building a business, before you even think of a business, start by building financial assets. Can you put even 50K per month in a year? Don't think even about the business. You have 600K, you know. Then you continue the work. When you get promoted or you get increment, increase that fund. Before you know it, you have 1.5M, 2M. Then now you can say, let me try a business with like 200K. Are you together? So that's how you need to think about a business. Remember, money is bigger than even your career or business. But know that money can fund your business. So start by setting, because money is like your extra hand. It can be the principle for starting that business. Remember, if I have one name and I'm trying a business with 200K and doesn't work, it's not a big deal. Maybe four months from now, love, saved more and gone to the 1M, back to the 1M. The risk that people take, you've never tried any business and you take a 5 million loan, it doesn't work. So like personally, what I did, when I was uh, working in the bank, we created Facebook groups and social media channels. And from 2016 to 2011, to 2021, sorry, 2016 to 2021, I used to pay someone 30K per month to run the social media channels. The social media channels grew and they're the ones that gave birth to Abujani. Because now at least I have customers, they trust me and they can pay for our services. So that's the example of a strategy. So always have a way that when you're working, you also train something on the side, but don't take too much risk and blow up your salary by taking too, my, too many loans. So just know that the first thing that I, you can do, be used to saving and investing consistently, then use that as a seed to try out new things. So the first tool might not work, but the third one or fourth one would work. But know that business has got higher risk that in, than investment. But again, it is part of the portfolio. So it's actually good. So from what I know, if I would tell you guys something, with the age of AI, everyone will need to be what we call equity holder. So equity holder will mean that you need to invest in companies because AI will replace some of us. So we'll be making money by We'll be making money by doing what? Getting dividends from the companies that are run by robots. Are you together? So in the long run, everyone has to find a way 
to invest in a company, either your business or other businesses. Because we've seen like AI are replacing people at Google's and stuff like that. So it's always good for young people, please, especially in your 20s, build a buffer. You know, a buffer is like the arsenal that gives you the privilege to start a business. Then the other thing is that don't be sold to things. Get things that you understand. Whether it is products, that's where you do a masterclass, we guide you, and you have communities. And I can tell you, I have medics that I, if they come to speak to you about money now, you want to believe that it is them. Because they've taken their time, they've understood money market, they've understood treasury bills and bonds, you know. And they've understood that in life you need two things, financial freedom number and home ownership. That number that we are talking about that is either 10M or 20M is important and also home ownership. Once you have those two, then you are good to go. Before you achieve those two, it doesn't matter. Whether you own a clinic, whether you drive a big car, it doesn't matter. But people have worked towards home ownership and they have the financial freedom number, which you said, if it is 30M, it is giving you 300K per month. If it is 10M for you, it is giving you 10K per month, 100K per month. If it is 5M for you, it is giving you 50K per month. Once you have that, that, that is when now you have the so-called soft life. Not this soft life of bigger sharehe in one day, then 29 days of misery as you wait for the next salary. That's not soft life. That is misery. So when you have the passive income, let me tell you, it feels different. It slaps differently. And always tell Tim Yolo, if you are here, my comeback for you is Yoyo. If you Yolo today and in emergency come sub tomorrow, we'll tell you Yoyo, you are on your own. So you better have money to ensure that you're able to tackle life. And money is the true freedom because it can give you the luxury to do things that you really love. So if you want entrepreneurship, be very good with money management and saving then it will be the seed capital for you to try now entrepreneurship and you'll have more freedom. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Robert. I've seen uh, we have gone past uh, our time with one minute. We'd love to have all the questions answered. I think um, this just highlight the need to have more frequent sessions and we are hoping that uh, we're going to have more time with you, Robert that our uh, young uh, colleagues out there can build um, good portfolios to, to go on and uh, as they serve humanity, they also achieve uh, financial freedom. Uh, Joan, if you're uh, available, you can take it out now. Dr. Ari, yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Vincent. Thank you so very you. much for moderating today's session. And a very, very big and heartfelt gratitude to Mr. Robert from Abujani. Thank you so much for the insights that you've been able to share with us, the wisdom that you've been able to get from me through this session. It has been amazing. It has been insightful. And my charge to all of you, my fellow young doctors, is that the magic is in the doing. It is one thing to listen to all of these insights, yet another to actually take time and faith and practice all of the insights that you've been given. I am uh, an alumni of Abojani, and I can tell you that the sessions that I had with them were really transformative in terms of getting to understand how to handle personal finances. What you cannot, what you do not know, you cannot grow. That is what I've kept insisting all the way from our first session on building a diversified income portfolio. In the interest of time, I will not uh, I will not belabor anything that has been said. My hope is that it has been impactful to you and that you'll begin to see the transformation even as you take time and be able to plan your personal finances for the year 2025. Remember that we are doing this as a series just to be able to give you, to equip you with knowledge for you to be able to plan yourself even ahead of next year. We'll be having much more sessions from the career team on growing your career on non-clinical spaces that you can move into, but we wanted to start from the base, helping you understand what to do with that money and how to plan around it. I'm going to invite our convener for the Young Doctors Network, Dr. Christine, who is then going to invite our Secretary General, Kenya Med Medical Association. And from there, we're going to be able to close the meeting. Mine is just thank all of you who've been there for today's session, for engaging in the chat box, for the questions that you've been able to ask. Because even in one year or another, one person's question has enabled somebody else to learn. And much gratitude also to those who are in the career committee under the Young Doctors Network, Dr. Paula Mwende, Dr. Fiona Mutete. Thank you so much, guys, for the amazing support and even for being able to pull off today's 
webinar. I hand over now to Dr. Christine Mutoni. Blessed night, everyone. Thank you so much, Doc. Dr. Christine? Hi everyone, good evening. Uh, as you've heard, my name is Dr. Christine Mutoni, convener of the Young Doctors Network, a committee that is part of the Kenya Medical Association. And like the word, we are all about young doctors, matters young doctors, helping young doctors grow, helping them excel in their careers, but more so excel in their lives, yeah? So um, first of all, congratulations, uh, Dr. John, for organizing an amazing uh, webinar series. I think every young doctor, every old doctor, every doctor will uh, benefit from just knowing how to actually attain financial freedom. Because what all these calls we do, all these doctory one minute, you know, and all these, everything that we do in our career, it's as much as the, that fulfillment you get from serving the patients, at the end of the day, you also have to be able to sort yourself financially and get that freedom so that even you do not end up um, having medicine as something that you just do for money. So that you're even able to enjoy your career way more knowing that you're financially secure, knowing that you're financially free. And then you can also achieve some of your other goals, whether it's um, advancing your education, whether it's uh, starting your clinic, your business. Um, yeah, so thank you, Dr. Joan. Um, thank you, Dr. Robert, for the insight. And there's much, much more coming up from uh, the Young Doctors Network. Um, Dr. Joan heads the Career Development Committee, which is a subcommittee of the Young Doctors Network. But there's so much within Young Doctors. There's um, the Research Committee, there's a committee on mental health and membership, um, there's a committee that uh, deals with all matters to do with Young Doctors. So stay tuned. If you are not yet a member of the Young Doctors Network, kindly just um, uh, go to our website, that's, that's the www.kma.co.ke. And from there, you'll be able to see a list of all committees. You can click on the Young Doctors Network and you'll be able to join um, the Young Doctors Network. Of course, you'll have to, as part, part of your financial uh, planning has to be paying your KMA subscription so that we can be able to also organize for you similar sessions. Um, but other than that, also thank you for everyone who's participated and I look forward to having you all participating more and more YDN events. Uh, from there, I'll hand over to Dr. Diana Marion, who's the Secretary General of the Kenya Medical Association. Karibu sana, Dr. Marion. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mutony. Uh, thank you, Dr. Joan. Thank you, Dr. Bartes. Um, and, um, not to forget the very important guest uh, that has really really made things very simple. I think um, I really love the space we are getting to. Doctors really didn't get out as much. Their business was the patient and the patient was their business. And uh, this is very important that we are now navigating spaces such that we are able to really get specific different freedoms that we actually need to grow as people. I don't want to say much because much has been said. I want to wish everyone a good night and also to welcome doctors. Kindly be members of Kenya Medical Association. Let us grow each other as peers. So as we are growing each other and individually, as in the, um, uh, we are growing financially, let's also be able to grow together. So welcome to KMA. And I think uh, uh, Dr. Mutoni has shared the website. Uh, thank you. Have a blessed night. Thank you so much, Doc, for, for giving us this opportunity as young medical practitioners. Um, personally, I've learned so much. Um, and I want to thank God, actually, for giving us this opportunity and a sober mind to, to, to go through this session. Uh, all the the members of the committee, Santini Sadna. Uh, I want just to echo one comment from uh, the participants. We need to see young doctors invest on day one. Um, after graduation in every field from health to culture, even technology and AI exploits and politics. 
agreeing, I totally agree. Uh, medics are the, uh, the la cream of this country. And if you're not in leadership, you're not in business, then the country is really suffering. Let's use our potential as the smart people in this nation to actually bring uh, transformative change that uh, generations ahead will uh, remember us for. Satani Sana, and may God bless you. Um, to just cross off with a word of prayer, uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this enlightening session and for the knowledge that Robert has shared and everyone has shared and sentiments you have heard from everyone with the good questions from all the participants. We are grateful for, for, for the wisdom you have provided through this gathering. Lord, as we step forward with new understanding, guide us in applying this knowledge wisely in our financial journeys. May these insights that we've gained empower us to make sound decisions, not just for our own lives, but to be a blessing to those around us. We pray for continued wisdom, patience, and a heart that it seeks you in all we do. As we live, we ask for your peace and protection over each of us. Bless our endeavors, and may we find true prosperity in all aspects of our life. Thank you, Lord. We trust you in your guidance now and always. In Jesus' name, I do believe and pray. Amen. Santeni Sana, let's meet again uh, once we have uh, organized the next session. All right. Have a good one.